Hello tacticians, it's Nox here and today we're going to be looking at the rework for Tank Smasher. But before we get into that, I'd just like to do my usual thank yous, and today they go to Bulzak, Galapox, Nihilus, Morkai and Senpai. All of you have used my friend code and it is very much appreciated as it really does help me keep on top of things. So thank you once again. So what has actually changed? Well, the first thing is Tank Smasher now gets the Get Stuck In trait. So for every two hits this unit scores with an attack against an enemy unit, it has a 30% chance to score an additional hit. So those three hits could, some of the time, be four hits. Unless, of course, you've got two or more friendly orcs or four or more friendly units that are also adjacent, in which case it's a guarantee to go up to four. So not a massive buff for Tank Smasher there. However, what really has changed are his stats. And here are a few examples of various points from Tank Smasher's stats as he goes up from Epic Silver 1 to Legendary Diamond 3. And as you can see across the board, health has gone up and damage has come down, but we're going to get to damage in a second. First of all, the health. Its increase along with the passive means this guy is insanely survivable as long as he does move at least two hexes because with his passive ability he will be taking at least 29% less damage when the skill is at level 26 and that increases up to 33% less damage at level 44. So no matter where you're using this guy always in every turn make sure you move him those two hexes as it will really increase his survivability. So what about the damage? The base damage has decreased. There's no hiding from that. But you will also get an increase in the amount of armor penetration. Instead of 20%, it's now 50%. And not only that, again on the passive, you will actually get that damage back the higher that that passive goes. So the passive is really the important skill to make note of when it comes to Tank Smasher, because as long as it's at a respective level, it means his damage hasn't decreased, again, as long as you move those two squares, and his armor penetration has also increased, which means he's now doing a lot more damage. And then you add on top the get stuck in passive, and you're looking at possibly four attacks instead of three, and his damage has actually gone up. However, as I said, it does rely on moving those two hexes, which is easy enough when it comes to the TA, Guild War, and maybe even the Guild Raids. So far, it seems okay, but there's a couple of things to note here. He has actually lost a few things which aren't mentioned here. The first is the counterattack. He used to have a counterattack which did physical damage very much like Brother Jaeger. This will actually mean because he has lost that physical damage, he's now no longer eligible in a number of the legendary events. And, again, because of that loss of an attack, he is now worse against swarms. And I don't think they really needed to remove the bite. I, I think that was a nice addition to what he could already do. And, indeed, made him quite viable in some circumstances, as I said before, the legendary events. So, what about his active ability? Well, it's more or less remained the same. The amount of direct damage has increased and you get a bonus amount of damage based on how many hexes that he has traversed from the starting hex to the enemy and then if that wasn't enough all affected enemies get pushed and suppressed for a round unless they're a big target in which case that's where he'll stop and that target is then stunned for a round instead which means they can't use their active abilities and can only move one hex the unfortunate part about this is the suppression. Overwatch characters will get to shoot at Tank Smasher as he runs at them. It's a shame he doesn't actually get to finish his move first, therefore suppressing them and removing that Overwatch. Kind of giving him a pseudo infiltrate because he's moving so fast. Personally, that's how I think they should have done it. It would mean cool, thematic, and bring his usefulness up, especially again in the TA and Guild Wars. As it stands, as he runs in, he's going to get shot, although there will be that damage reduction, but he could end up dying before he even hits his target. Overall, an okay rework. He didn't quite get the same sort of facelift that Snotflogger did, but I can certainly see him being frequently used in the Taunt Arena and Guild War. 
the main part of the tournament arena I can see him is if you do like using Ragnar teams he will happily go in there and if you are going second you can line him up and smash that Ornshi in the face so he's no longer next to everyone so they then don't get the additional move and of course Tank Smasher will have a damage reduction on him because the amount of distance he's moved so it's actually going to be fairly difficult to take him down. I personally wouldn't want to take him past Epic Gold 1 because you do need to spend those badges on his passive ability to keep him viable at the various levels. My biggest gripe is I guess that at this rate should really have been a 60% and the reason for that is with the name Tank Smasher you'd expect him to be good against the Rogal Dawn battle tank but I guess you can't have everything. Although with that movement of four he still can get around the battle tank although he will be triggering the gunner's fire if it hasn't been removed. If you like these videos then it would be much appreciated if you at least think about using my friend code as it really does help me out. Or if you or your guilds are looking for a new home please reach out to any of the guilds shown as we'll always welcome new people into our midst. As always don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll be seeing you on the battlefield.